I don't know if you if you are at, most people aren't as alarmist about AI as I am, but I don't know if you saw this story, but Google now upgraded their search engine. Just so everyone knows out there in chat, Google has a 90% market share on search. 90, not nine, not 19, 90. Um, in which now, instead of serving results, dude, they are going to answer your question with AI generated answers that they gener that they iterated of stealing from all <laughs> existing websites. So essentially, Google will answer its own search queries now on um, most search uh, search queries. In fact, yeah. while also manipulating those results by preferentially treating one site over another. Exactly. Or one user on a site over It's another. not even going to, that's the thing. It's going to crush mainstream media. Industry experts have now speculated by the end of next year, it will cost like the Washington Post and such like this $2 billion a year in lost ad rev. Because instead yeah. of just well, linking the, the, the Bloomberg article, they'll just say, or AI read, and here's the answer. And, and yeah. they won't have to pay. And, and I like that. And there's nothing wrong with crushing legacy media, but imagine what it's going to do to us content creators. Exactly. Exactly. See, check yeah. out the video I made on it. I, I published at like four o'clock or three o'clock. That's exactly what I said. I said, ha ha ha, mainstream media. But <laughs> like, we're on the same like we're on the same third rail. Like we're we're getting although eventually it balances itself out because as more and more legacy media and content creators rage quit or get crushed under, there'll be fewer and fewer results for the AI to train on. And so if eventually, unless they're making the results up themselves, they're gonna have to to retool to recalibrate. Yeah, I mean but I But tem temporarily it's gonna be like an apocalypse for some people. Dude, I mean, exactly. That's the thing, like. For for MSM, it's going to be an apocalypse. Like, and it'll happen like that. You're going to see, like, you will see. We already see like BuzzFeed and Vice. They're cooked, right? There's no way mid tier propaganda sites like Jezebel or Kotaku, any of these Geno Media websites. Jezebel still exists. Yeah, yeah. I haven't um, seen an article from them linked in years. But I mean, like, <laughs> I thought they were dead. When so generally, so people know, like, let's say. Um, uh like if i wanted to say uh like trump debate right this is how you know google would gener generally serves its results when you're looking at news this is how they're gonna do it for news so you got wall street journal link first the new york times political this will just go away and it's just gonna say grok says this is what the answer is so <laughs> they're gonna lose all these clips all these clicks and then as you correctly saw that that you connected the exact same dot I did immediately as quickly as I did, like this will be bad for content creators because yeah, because because we're searchable too. <laughs> yep, as hard as they try to suppress us, new people still find our stuff sometimes. And, but what what I'm gonna say is like um, so yes, this is true of Google search, but what else does Google on sticks? YouTube, yeah, Blogspot. Yeah. Half of the other companies under the sun. Right. And so I don't know if you've seen it based. I don't know what you like search for on YouTube or what your view, if you even view stuff on YouTube, <clears throat> but like there, if people are, um, uh, if people are paying attention, I've seen more and more purely AI generated videos showing up on my search results. Now I, I see mostly fucking spam. I've I've noted the only way to find anything pertinent to a search these days on YouTube is to filter for like the last day or the last hour's yep. results and be that's hyper specific. Yep. That's if you if you're if you're not hyper specific, you ain't finding shit. And even then, half of it is spam. Yeah, it's for me. Like I'm noticing, and, and and the thing that pisses me off the most, YouTube had the most perfect search algorithms in. 2013, 2014, you could possibly fathom. You could go seamlessly for like, let's say that I want to listen to music and I want to listen to goth rock. Go to one song, the recommended list, it's all a bunch of goth rock. You could go through for hours and hours and hours and find everything you're looking for. You could look up news, you could look up any historical event, documentaries, literally anything. And it was all there, very categorical, very cleanly and very easy to sort through. Now try looking up any of these things without fiddling around manually over on the side for the recommended videos for the, for the ones that are linked and you're not going to find anything. Yeah. I can't even, I mean, I, I can search verbatim 
for the titles of videos that I know exist because I've literally got them backed up and they're still there. They won't even be on the front page. It's a verbatim search. Yeah, the, the, the funny thing is like people rightfully have criticized, for example, like new text search algorithms. Um, and they are weak, yeah. And they are bad. Yeah, they need to get better. Um, but as you, as I 100% I agree with you, five years ago, YouTube was, or 10 years ago, YouTube was perfect. Perfect. Except then they decided they wanted to try and, you know, sway people's public opinions. And they wanted to stop being a publisher and start being a, um, I'm sorry, stop being a platform and start being a publisher yeah. by omission. The way they get around is like, well, we're not a publisher. I'm like, yeah, but aren't you though, by actively filtering out and all and rising to the top, yeah. like in all the world's conversations, it's an ocean. And each, each one of our voices is just a drop in that ocean. And we're all putting out videos on YouTube. You don't need YouTube to say, we think Joe Biden's good. You can find all the drops that you want and then just promote them to the top. Like they yeah. are publishing by censorship or by omission. And, and by omitting from from notifications and stuff like I've noticed a precipitous drop on YouTube that's not echoed on any other site that I'm using. I'm super consistent fairly recently. Yeah, on yeah. Rumble, BitChute, Odyssey, it's like I'm basically consistent. I'm I'm growing slowly but consistently. Um and you know, I think what I've I've tried to been I've been sounding the alarm like us old heads, like our viewers will stick with us. Like for yeah. the most part, even during like as AI becomes more prominent, we'll be okay. Um, but for the next, you know, mini, you know, little sticks in training and for Nikki Haley and my baby, like it's gonna be very difficult for them to have like, dude, do you think anyone could come in and do what we do now? No, no, no shot. not, not unless they're astroturfed. Unless they work for like the daily wire or blaze and they pump them. Yeah. Or, or they've got a parent who's like in with political figures or with yeah. a tech firm or something. It's like, oh, well, my 13 year old is very talented. Look at these skills. Oh, that's she does mimes or something like that. Right. Uh, okay, yeah, we can get a contract in. Just she don't also have her own political to, views. Yeah, she also happens to be a flaming lib. The <clears throat> that's why I, I try to tell people, like, dude, section two. Trump's not the guy for section two thirty. We need someone younger who, like, Trump doesn't really like. He's he not he he has pledged to tackle the issue. I know, but he also pledged the first time around. He didn't give a damn until Twitter banned him. Then suddenly he cared. Um. I mean, I hope so. I just, I don't even need a change. I just want it enforced. Like if yeah. you're going to be, if you're going to let a company Google with 90% of the search algorithm, and by the way, if you include YouTube, it's even higher, right? And, and then the number two search engine behind all of that is Amazon. Um, you you let two or three companies control what information 90 to 95% of the population sees. I think that's a problem. Now, yeah. I, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know how I'm, I, 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 I don't know if I'm smart enough for, to, to, you know, I don't, I feel uncomfortable being like the government needs to break them up, but I don't know how else you do it because there will never, what do you think is going to happen to AI, dude? Yeah. It's going to be owned by Amazon and Google. Everyone, but Amazon I, and Google are going to have it. And, and Microsoft and a few and the others. Government. Yeah. What, what I, what I think needs to be done <clears throat> is a simple revision to section 230. So you simply scrap the old section 230 and revise it and make it clear those protections applicable under 230, they apply if you declare yourself to be a platform. If you're a platform, if effectively the idea, and some people don't know this, was that companies way back when that became a thing, they could not moderate the content on their sites. And so if I wanted to have a platform like, you know, gofuckyourself.com, where mm -hmm. people put Great videos site. of them of them fucking themselves, mm -hmm. and a 17-year-old puts a video of them fucking themselves up on there, under 230, I can't be held liable because there's no way for me to live moderate all the content on the site. When the site gets to the point where it is live moderating political opinions, so that's not illegal speech or anything, or something else that's merely objectionable, but it's not illegal, it's not spammy, it's not a scam. So it's it's not uh, it, it is speech and it's not outside of the law. Hmm. What they're effectively admitting is that they're a publisher at that point. Well, if you have the time to moderate content that would not get you in trouble for legal purposes, so it's not copyrighted, it's not illicit or something, then shouldn't you also be expected to live moderate anything that would be illicit, anything that would be infringement of some sort? So either be a pl platform, you gain the protection, but you're not allowed to moderate that content or manipulate it, 
or you're a publisher, in which case you can do whatever you want. You're live editorializing everything that goes on your site. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I, I tend to 100% agree. This is one thing that you and I have always been completely aligned on. And I feel like it's so simple. It's like the first time you step in and edit and, and put your finger on the scales for something that is not illegal, you lose protection. Yeah, it's very simple. And by the way, try criticizing the current iteration of 230 on Twitter. Can't do, do it. This ex do this experiment. I've, I've done it multiple times. There are a group of accounts that are clearly government-run bootlicking bot accounts that will immediately pour in to ramble about court decisions and things like that, to, bo yeah. to bootlick for Section 230 in its current form. And they will completely ignore it when you point out that you're arguing for revision, not scrapping it. Yeah, you can't get rid of it. It does need to exist. Yeah, um, otherwise the internet wouldn't exist at all. Right. But when, but you know how people are. It's like, hey, we need to change Section 230. And it's like the time old meme, like, I like pancakes. And then someone replies like, what, you don't like waffles? Like, <laughs> no, I didn't say Section 230 needs to go away. But and why do you hate fried eggs so much? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll say this. Uh, if you aren't going to enforce it, then there's no reason for it to exist. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there are innumerable examples. Let's just use, let's get uncomfortable. Let's talk about hate speech, right? Like racism. That is I'm not uncomfortable like, with it. I think that it's no, hilarious myself. Right. I mean, uh, me too. But I mean, I mean like, um, <laughs> I don't mean to make us or our viewers uncomfortable. I mean like push it to the limits because that's where free speech protections actually matter. Like yeah. if you, I don't care if somebody's spouting the most racist rhetoric on the planet. YouTube doesn't have a right to curate that content and still maintain Section 230 protections. Yeah. If it's not illegal, then don't curate it at all. And if you are able to, then you're showing that you should be held liable for anything that you fail to curate that would be illegal. Don't you? Yeah, so I agree. If, so if somebody yeah. loses a million dollars in Bitcoin because they fell prey to a scam that was linked on your site that you didn't take down for six months then yeah, you should be held civilly liable for that. Right. And then, I then there was there was some kid who, uh, there were videos of him uh, being molested when he was like 14, 15 or something. They were floating around on Twitter for months uh, before they I removed remember. it. And and there was a lawsuit over that. The lawsuit was, it was tossed out. And I'm thinking, and, okay, and if, Twitter if, if, Twitter, if, Twitter, if Twitter can remove some random post that I made for being basically objectionable to some pink haired freak out there, you're telling me that they can't remove child porn? Dude, the crazy be held liable. Thing. The craziest thing about the story you're talking about that, that I'm sure you know, but you didn't mention, which makes it even more crazy. Not that you didn't mention, but the actual victim was the one that was like, can you please take this down? Like yeah. people are spreading videos of me being abused. And, and Twitter's, Twitter's like, we're, no. <laughs> Twitter's like, we're, we're sorry. Child porn doesn't go against our TOS. Now we'll, we'll kick them off if they say something disparaging about Joe Biden. Yeah, right. Hopefully they don't have any microaggressions.